Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how uh, to make a palette which will work better for you overall, whether you use uh, acrylics or oils. Um, I'm not sure about watercolors. I never really have worked much with those. Um, but this was uh, part of my training, and uh, we're going to do that, and I'm going to teach you how to keep your paints moist and wet even when you're not using them and then we're going to mix up a base color uh, a base color um, in any painting that you do uh, especially in illustration there's always a base color uh, say somebody might want you to use a green or a blue or whatever type color uh, the whole painting will go with this color okay you don't have to do this it's not like uh, you know written in stone or anything but I've found personally that I enjoy doing it especially more now that I'm a, a fine artist over an illustrator okay so first let's start here with this palette all right as you can see I got a sheet of glass here I got this from Lowe's Home Depot something like that I think it's a 12 by 15 Okay, it's a, it didn't cost but like a dollar, maybe two dollars. And then I went on the internet and I found a value guide. Or a value step, value letter, whatever you want to call it. And I blew it up to like 12 inches and printed it out. Okay. And then on the back you will see that this is cardboard. So what I did was I cut the cardboard to match the size of the glass. Then... I painted the cardboard a neutral gray. Now that helps you see your colors better and understand them better. Uh, as you develop as an artist, your eye uh, will pick these things up and you'll understand. Something about if you have your color on a gray background instead of a white ground, you can see the values in it much easier. If you have a white background, the values all seem to look lighter. Okay. So, for those of you who don't really understand values and things yet, this chart is really, you know, wonderful. Say you're going to make up flesh tones, for instance. You would start out and you would mix your colors and it, they would become somewhere in the medium gray area here. Then, you would add your combination of your tint here and break it down. Now, as you're going to learn with the Riley color method, the only the values that we create are only going to be from here, 3, all the way up to here, 7. Okay? And you're going to learn to paint with those colors. And by painting with just those colors, or those values, your paintings will come to life. And they will pop. I'll show you an example of one of my paintings in a moment. Now, you do set aside a little bit brighter white for different things, such as uh, the glint of the eye or the or the water on the teeth and sometimes you might have a black but very rarely there's anything really true black if if you look at anything that's painted black and study it it's not really black at all it's all these variations of grays is, uh, you know, and just different things and shadows but they're not going to find anything that's a pitch black okay but anyways back to the palette all right so what you want to do is here you can see where I took Elmer's glue and I glued first I glued the value scale to the cardboard then I glued the glass to the cardboard and after that was all done I took duct tape and went around the edges mostly just to protect myself from getting cut uh, from the edges and things okay this is really great because it's so easy to clean you take this when your paint dries, you just scrape it right off, and it's real easy to clean. Uh, and you use a little turpentine to wipe it off, and, and so on. So, as long as you don't try to bend it, you're okay. If you try to bend it, obviously it's going to break on you. Alright, so, uh, if you have any more questions with that, just uh, leave me a comment on my page. Uh, or if you have joined my Facebook like page, or a friend of mine on Facebook, simply ask me there but i think i explained it well enough for you uh basically the whole cost of this palette is under two dollars okay now the next thing is this here 
which I just recently bought. This came to me as an idea from a friend of mine, James Powell, who I call Dark Man, actually, is his nickname. <laughs> uh, because he, since I've gotten out of illustration, he's probably become the top fellow as far as doing dark fantasy art and that type of thing. Okay, at the end of the day, when you're done, you just open this up. Very simple you know, for some people, but I'm challenged. Here we go. It's open. And you place your palette inside such and then seal it up so the next morning when you come back to work your palette is still nice and wet if you're using acrylic paint the best thing to do is take a mist bottle and mist down the whole palette and make sure the paints are good and wet then put the cover on and then you're fine okay so it's it's not that hard this cost me I think a total of four dollars from Walmart but it's well worth it because you know it takes me probably anywhere from four days to seven days to do an oil painting and in that time the paints will get a little stiff on you but we're going to talk about that here in just a second as well okay now we're going to work on that base color I was telling you about all right, let me gather my paints together here. Oh, if you hear me moaning a lot, it's because I'm getting old. <laughs> All right, now, this was taught to me by Catherine Jones. Make sure the camera's set up right. We'll zoom in a little bit. All right, this was basically what she used in most of her paintings, okay? And I'm mixing this up because I'm getting ready to work on Madison's book covers, which I don't do hardly anymore, but since she is my beloved wife to be, you know, we'll do that. Now watch the amounts of paint I'm putting in there. That's Elizabeth Kirinson. Okay. Next up is Ultramarine Blue. All right. All right. Now I put just that much in there to start with but I'm going to put some over here to the side and I'll show you why in just a moment okay so and then final is Indian yellow okay Indian yellow all right nice little trick too I'm sure most of you figure this out if you work with oils sometimes these little caps are really hard to get off and they'll rip your hands to shreds an old nutcracker like that works wonders. It'll pull it right off with no problems. Or I've even used a pair of pliers as well. Okay. Now, the amounts and how you use this paint will determine the whole mood of the painting. Okay. Let me try to explain that to you. All right. Now, if you put more Indian yellow in it, say oh, I put twice as much Indian yellow in there than I did the other colors then what I would have would be uh, more of a pastel uh, underpainting color, okay? Now, if I added more of the blue, I would have more of a dark, uh, uh, cold color. And then, now, down the road, we're going to go into all this warm and cold color. So, you know, if you don't understand what I'm talking about at the moment, you will later on, I promise. And then, alizarine crimson. Now, the crimson is what gives it warmth and the more of you that you put into it the more warmer the painting will be okay a lot of times when i'm painting uh the sexy women and things that i paint then that's you know what i use okay uh incidentally i think i was going to show you an example i'm going to show you this real quick so i'm going to turn you around so i hope you don't get dizzy yeah in here and see, this is a portrait I've done it myself just recently. But you can see that this was using... All right, come on, focus up now. This is a very expensive camera. It should focus pretty easy. Uh, but you can see all the warm colors. And even in the background, if you look up through here, and stuff and down in the shirt and stuff, you can see that base color showing through that I'm trying to teach you to paint with right now okay 
All right, so here we go back to the palette again. This is my collection of brushes, by the way. I'm paranoid. I'm one of the people, man. I gotta have a lot of brushes. This stuff, those are the cheapies, but I've got tons and tons and tons of brushes. I don't ever like to run out of things. I think that's all artists. We're always afraid that we're going to be out of something here. All right. Let me tighten this right back up. All right. Now, what I do, generally speaking, paint to me when it first comes out of the tube is it's okay, but within a day it's going to get a little stiff on me. So what I do, you can either take linseed oil, which is what I use as my medium, um, or you can take clove oil. Now clove oil is great, but it's very expensive. This little bottle was like, you see, it was $13, and I bought that, well, let's say four or five years ago, okay? So, but it works great. If you take it, and you do the same thing with your linseed oil, I'm going to use the clove oil, you put one, two, three, four drops in it, like that. Right. Like I say, you could use the linseed oil just the same. And then you just take your palette knife and mix it. Mix it all up. There. Now, you can see the colors starting to come together there. It's really hard to going to be to see on here, but I am going to show you uh, some videos of me painting with this too. I'll probably shoot those tomorrow day sometime possibly. Um, and stuff. Okay. All right. Now I've got that mixed up. Move that over a pile. Now that's going to be used throughout the painting. A lot of it. All right. Now this blue over here. The reason we have that is we're going to take some more of this and scoot it over there. Okay. And we're going to mix it in with the blue. Now this is going to serve as our darkest color, okay? And it's good the blue will give it, you know, the darkness, but with the the reddish and the Indian yellow, it gives it warmth, okay? So that serves as a really good black. Now on my last painting I did, um, I experimented a little bit, and I expect you to do the same thing. I mean. Being an artist is a whole learning process. So you try different things. Not everything I say is the gospel by any means. Okay, so uh, learn for yourself. Instead of the blue in the original mix, I used a purple, dioxide purple, and then I added. Once I had my basic mix done, then I added some blue to it, and it actually came out to be a very nice color but it was more, the painting came out more of a softer pastel thing. Now since I'm doing a book cover for Madison, uh, here, I'll show you. Now, this here, back away a little bit. I love this camera, this camera is awesome. Madison got me this so I could do this for people and we could, uh, this was one of my dreams come true. But you can see it's gonna be more of an illustration and you're going to have the various items like a gun and telescope and stuff and maybe black because you got to make room for the type and all these things that are going to be in it and stuff okay so we'll go over more of that possibly tomorrow or the next day but i know for sure the next video i'm going to shoot is going to be showing you how to make flesh tones which is very difficult for a lot of people um, it's not one color it's not a com it's a combination of colors and it is from the Raleigh method um, and but if you learn the method and use it the way I teach it to you uh, your work will come alive I promise you okay my friends I hope you have a wonderful evening I'm gonna get to painting myself here I love you all hugs good night